On today's episode of This Old Backup, we'll show you how we rebuilt our leaking hydraulic steering cylinder. Uh, we are just driving along and all of a sudden we noticed there was a puddle under the machine and it was just pouring out of the one side. Uh, it's a pretty easy rebuild, but it's kind of a weird cylinder that has caps on both sides. It's a double action versus a single action, uh, but we'll show you how we did it. The first step here is to use the bucket, pick up the front end of the machine and put it on some jack stands or use a big ass log. The right side seal here is the one that was leaking on our machine. Here is the entire cylinder removal procedure in the manual. To start this job off, we're going to go over to the left side and loosen up the four cap nuts here. Don't remove the bolts, just loosen them one to two turns. Then we remove the wheel and fire up the machine. You want to turn the steering wheel all the way to the left, which will unseat the cylinder. This next step is a little bit tricky. There's a flat spot on each of the ball joints where you can put a wrench and you need a pretty big source of leverage. We use two large adjustable wrenches and set one against the log and then used a foot in this pressing motion to break the other side free. <laughs> but you need to try breaking that free. I'll go get the pickle for it. Okay. So you remove the nut and then you stick a pickle fork in the tie rod and hammer like your life depends on it. We wasted some timer with a smaller hammer before we grabbed an ax and used the back side of that. When using a pickle fork, you wanna make sure to put the flat side on the bottom. Once the ball joint is free, you can unscrew it from the cylinder and then go ahead and screw that nut back on there for safekeeping. Now we flip to the other side of the machine and repeat the process. We undid this by hand, but we should have just taken the wheel off so we could have got in there with a pneumatic driver. That's what we ended up having to use to tighten it anyway. Same process on this side, pop out the ball joint, unscrew it from the cylinder, put the nut back on there, and then we're going to flip back to the left hand side and loosen up the hydraulic hose. These usually aren't super tight, you can usually just get them with an adjustable wrench. Once that hose is free, we flip back to the other side. When we loosened the hydraulic hose nut here, it brought the fitting with it, so we just took them both out in this shot. It is, it is unseated. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to put a screwdriver in there. Oh, oh, what did you do? He pushed it. It's fine. It's draining all the hydraulic oil out of the cylinder. Did you not do that right on oh, where yeah. we're fucking standing? So don't be like us. Use a bucket to catch the oil as it pours out. But you want to push the cylinder back through and out of the left side. All the seals on the left hand side of the machine are built into the end cap. So we can rebuild those on the bench. Here's what it looks like with the cap off. This is the right side. We screwed the fitting back into the hydraulic cap nut. And you can see here that the seal on the right side or what's left of the wiper seal is essentially completely obliterated. And it was pouring oil onto the ground. So to rebuild this right hand side, we're going to remove the wiper seal or in our case, pieces of a wiper seal. After that, we pull out the main seal. You can just stab it with a pick and rip it out. It's getting replaced, so it doesn't matter how many pieces it comes out in. If you're unfamiliar with hydraulic seals, the main seal inside usually has a U-channel in the back of it, and that always faces inward on the cylinder. Only one piece remains, and that is the hard plastic ring. 
it has a slit in it from the factory, so it's just a matter of prying it up and then prying it out. And that is the factory direction. Once all the seals are out, you want to give it a real good cleaning. Shine a flashlight in there and make sure you don't have any pieces or debris in the barrel. It never hurts when you're installing these seals to give them a light coating of some sort of grease. It just helps you slide them in there because it's quite the process. They make these hydraulic seal installation tools that bend the seal so that it can fit inside and then the idea is that you can just kind of pop it loose and it goes in there. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. You can pick up a cheap set on eBay. Um, in this case, they didn't really work and the seal just popped back out. Sometimes you get lucky and they pop right in, but usually this takes quite a while. And maybe with a better tool it's easier, but with the cheap tool I have, it's quite a pain. Now here's what it looks like when it goes right. In this case, I pick. also used a pick yeah, to that's... line it up and make sure it was in the correct groove on the inside. And then the tool just kind of worked perfectly. Shoo! The hard plastic ring comes next. It also gets a light coating of grease. There's a slot in between the main seal and the wiper seal where this gets installed. And that shows the correct direction. And the key to this one is to just start one side of it and then chase it around in a circle, pushing it in. Once that clicks in, we can move along and install the wiper seal. It's easy to put this one in the correct direction. You put the 90 degree corner into the lip on the outside of the cylinder that matches. This one was by far the easiest of the three. Throw a little bit of grease on there and it pushed right in by hand. All right, maybe not easy, but I was able to push it in by hand in a minute or so. There we go. One of the two sides of the cylinder have been rebuilt and you can see the wiper seal, the hard plastic ring, and then the actual inner seal. The rest of the job can be completed on the bench. Doesn't need to be done on the machine. First, you want to pop off that end cap. You should mark the end cap and which side it came off because the two sides are not the same. We started here with this middle seal and it was a bit of a pain. We used a mini screwdriver and a pick and then it just broke off. So maybe save some time and just cut it off. In this next shot, you can see that the two plastic rings that go on either side of the seal here uh, are off already. We missed that shot apparently. But anyway, we, we uh, cleaned it all up and then we noticed that there's an O-ring on the inside of the center seal. So we pulled that out as well. A little bit of grease never hurts on the reinstall. I thought this O-ring was going to be easy, but it turned out to be quite difficult. I ended up having to use kind of a hook shaped pick and then walking it around in a circle to pop it on there. To get it into its home in the center here, I used a punch. And you should definitely not use a punch because it's hardened. You should definitely use a softer metal, just like a regular steel pick. I definitely scratched the tube there, but no big deal. Just hit it with a little bit of scotch Bright. This pink seal replaces the prior green seal, and it goes over top the O-ring in the center channel. I was easily able to pop it onto the first ring by hand, and then I used a pick and a screwdriver. Uh, don't use a screwdriver. It also scratched the tube there. When the center o-ring is installed, it'll slide down and be even with the outside more or less. Now we just need to install the two plastic rings and the center portion will be done. These slide down and can be put in by hand pretty easily.
And just like that, the center portion is complete and we can move on to the second cap. Here is the part number on this kit. The wiper seal or dust seal on this end cap is also completely destroyed. So we're just pulling out in pieces with a pick. Next, I usually go for the main seal and I usually just stab it with a pick and yank it out. This one was quite the challenge, but eventually we managed to get out both the main seal and the hard plastic ring, and then we gave it a nice quick scrubbing. You want to make sure to get any old seal chunks or dirt particles out of the inside and the outside. When we flipped it over, we noticed that the bottom side had this o-ring, so we went ahead and took that off, cleaned it, and replaced it. Now we flip over back on the top side and throw a little bit of grease on the main seal. With this one, you want to make sure that the open channel is facing inwards. Of course, I left my seal installation tool at the farm and I had to do it by hand. It took about 10 minutes, probably. Um, but here is the little clip at the end where I managed to jam it in there. With the hard plastic ring, I find it's best to start it in one spot and then kind of work it around in a circle. It's also not very easy to install, and unfortunately my hands block most of the shot. Now you can see the two inner seals. The main seal is installed in the back, and then that hard plastic ring The last seal on this end cap is the dust seal and the square edge of this meets the square 90 degree edge on the inside of the tube. A little bit of grease, a little bit of pushing it in. Remember earlier when I said you should mark which side the end cap came off of? Well, we didn't. And so we ended up measuring based on the drawing that's in the repair manual and installed the end cap on the shorter of the two sides. We wipe a little bit of grease on the inside of the seals here to help it slide down the shaft. And then I take a dead blow plastic hammer and lightly tap it down the shaft. It seemed to work best to hit it at the bolt holes and go around kind of alternating between sides. Tap it all the way down and then it's ready to install the machine. Make sure to clean out that hole and then slide the shaft in. Our seals are nice and fresh so we can't just push the cylinder back through on the far side by hand. So we hooked a ratchet strap around it and slowly tightened it up and beat it in there. Once the cylinder is fully seated, we can go ahead and hand tighten the bolts. You want to hand tighten them as deep as you can in there. And then we went ahead and tightened them up all the way. Next, we reattach the hydraulic hose. You want to make sure that the O-ring in the end is nice and clean and still present. When you're tightening down these hydraulic hoses, they don't need to be super tight. Just give it a good hand snug and then check it for leaks. Uh, now we're back on the right side and we need to do the same thing. Only this one has the fitting that we need to install and then the hydraulic hose on top of the fitting. They both came loose when we took it apart initially, so we just go ahead and tighten up the fitting and then the hydraulic hose. Next we reinstalled the ball joint, then the tie rod. And lastly, the nut. Of course, our impact wouldn't fit, 
so we ended up having to take the wheel off to be able to tighten that anyway. Back on the left side we screwed in the ball joint and then we're tapping in the tie rod and throwing the nut on it. We missed the shot of tightening the nut but it did get tightened. To get this side to seat and be able to actually tighten the nut without it spinning in place we had to pound it in with a piece of wood and a hammer. Now we'll finish tightening up the ball joint, get it all the way in by hand and then use a large adjustable wrench to finish tightening it down. Once both sides are hand tightened like this, we get into position and tighten them against each other. These were really hard to break free, so I'm assuming they're supposed to be tight. Now that the complete hydraulic cylinder has been reassembled, we can go ahead and fire up the machine and slowly actuate it back and forth. Make sure that there's no leaks coming from the hydraulic hoses or either of the seals. You also want to move slowly so you can get any trapped air forced out of there as it refills with fluid. Everything looked good, no leaks, so we can go ahead and put the front wheels back on, bolt them on, and she'll be ready to go. With the wheels back on, we propped the front end of the machine back up, took out our jack stand, and dropped the machine back down to the ground. Then we did a little bit of turning and driving and just rechecked both the seals and the hoses to make sure we still didn't have any leaks. And this job is done. See you on the next one.